It's this Native American term that connotes the spirit of evil. And um, so all that I'm doing, I'm just a translator. And it's not just the Native Americans. I mean, every tradition that's based in, in spiritual wisdom or understanding has its own symbol system for pointing out Watiko and calls it by different names. Um, and the, the idea is, is that the origin is in the psyche. It's not something objective or external to us. And um, it operates through the psyche as well as having the origin in the psyche. And it operates through the unconscious, through the, the parts of us that, are, that have blind spots in such a way that we then unwittingly become the instrument to act it out in the world. And at the same time, it hides itself from being seen. So we're not aware of that unwittingly become its instrument. And um, so it's actually this, this, you can think of it as sort of the psychological form of being blind, like this blindness of the mind in which people who are afflicted with it actually believe that they're seeing clearly. And not only that, but they believe that they're more, that they're seeing more clearly than people who are actually clear sighted. The thing about Watiko is that it's getting created in this moment where we are co-creating it all of us, not just you and me, but seven billion of us humans, it's a phenomena, it's this, it's a, you know, it's a phenomena that we're all co-creating or not every moment. And so that I think is the, is the essential thing, that it's something that's available to us that we're actually participating in the co-creation of right now. It's just like when you're in a dream and there's like a demon in the dream and you don't know you're dreaming, you're going to be running away or scared or reacting to that energy but in the ultimate sense what is that dream in the ultimate sense it's nothing other than your own energy just projected out as the dream and, and to have that realization that's to have lucidity that's to wake up to the dreamlike nature and i'm basically pointing out in my work that that same situation is available to us in the waking dream that what we're thinking as being outside of ourselves you know in the form of the, the whole objective world this seemingly objective world that similar to a dream where you can have lucidity and, and recognize, oh, it's actually a reflection of my internal, what's going on inside of me, the same thing in our waking dream. We, we can have that exact same understanding. The really the underlying point of view that I'm coming from, and you know, and I began having these, these experiences, you know, like 30 years ago or something, was that um, we're having a collective shared dream right now that we're all you know, um, we're the dreamers of the dream, but and we're, we're, we're collaboratively dreaming up this world together. And what that means is that what's happening in the seemingly outer world is actually a reflection of what's happening inside of us. And the thing about the Watiko virus is that it's a collective psychosis. So that's important because what I'm pointing at is that there is a collective psychosis that's, that's endemic, that's running rampant in the greater body politic of the world. But we've become so kind of, you know, we, we're under almost like an anesthesia, like we've become like sort of numb to the incredible insanity that, we, that we're playing out, that we're, we're destroying the biosphere which is the support system, the life support system of our species, we're actively destroying it. If like an enlightened alien look sort of objectively from outside the system of what we were doing, they would be scratching their head going, why is the most intelligent species that's ever, that's ever emerged on planet Earth, why are they actively committing collective suicide? And so the thing I'm saying is that that process as it's playing out in the world is actually reflecting a deep unconscious inner process that's happening within our psyche and it behooves us to recognize that.